Hello again, YouTubers, and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a light called a Sympathetic uh, Restoration and a Box Restore on a very important, some people might say the most important model of Matchbox Lesney ever made, and that is the 1953 uh, Lesney Moco Coronation Coach. So this model really was pivotal, was important, because this was the first model made by uh, Moco Lesney that really had any success. Um, they sold over a million of these pieces, and this is what really put them on the map. This is what uh, established the Lesney name as a real powerhouse in the toy industry in the UK in the early 1950s. Um, so we're going to open it up and take a look at what we're starting with on this model. Now, for any of you that are serious uh, vintage Matchbox or uh, Matchbox Lesney collectors, um, you will immediately, of course, recognize the significance of this model, uh, as well as uh, you're probably familiar with the typical price tag on these. Um, I've watched them for over a year Every time that I've seen one come up um, on eBay or one of the auction sites, they tend to go for anywhere from $150 to $200, um, depending on the condition of the model and if the original box is intact or not. Um, I was able to pick up this model for really a steal. I think I paid $40 for it. Um, and, you know, the box had some condition issues, the model had some condition issues, but um, for something that at this point is uh, over 75 years old, um, it was really in pretty remarkable shape, and I knew that I could fix uh, the major problems with this model. So, as we can see, um, we've got one of the end flaps that's completely torn off. Um, the uh, inner flaps uh, are also torn on the one side, missing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the actual models. The, the person that I purchased these from uh, was kind enough to make sure that they were wrapped and very well protected uh, when they sent them to me. So this is actually my first time even seeing these beyond the pictures I was sent uh, when I purchased it. So there are two models of coach that are typically found. There's a gold and a silver. Um, as this is my first model, I'm still on the hunt for the gold, but uh, this is a very, very nice uh, copy of the Silver Coach, um, and I'm not sure which one was more common. I Honestly, I think I've seen more gold in the listings than the Silver, um, but I don't think either one is more or less valuable than the other. Uh, they're just different. And here you can see the uh, tiny little horses and riders. This is a, all a single piece casting. Um, and as you can see from the scale, these are these are very very tiny. Um, the paint on these has some high surface wear, some edge wear. Um, it is not broken, which a lot of times uh, when I've come across these, they will be busted or possibly missing a rider or one of the sections of horses. And this is intact and has never been damaged. Um, the paint, you know, obviously you can see on the boots they're missing some of the black, the rider's hats aren't quite as nice as they should be. Um, but again, considering the age, this is really in remarkable shape. And uh, I know those other minor touch-ups are things that I can easily fix. Turning our attention to the box here, you can see the, the one end flap um, that was sent to me that's been uh, torn off on the end there. Um, and a lot of times, I, I never know whether or not this is something that happened, you know, the first time it was opened um, or if this just happened from ages of wear, but uh, I'm going to go to a method you've seen me use before, and that is this archival mending tissue. Um, because of the significance and the value of this box um, and the fact that I'm already repairing it, I want to make sure that these repairs are done in such a way that it's not going to degrade or damage the box any further, um, especially not into the future as it continues to age. And this uh, mending tissue, this archival quality tissue, uh, is meant just for that. It's, um, it's an acid-free, it's got a light adhesive on it. Um, it is actually removable if at some point in the future 
um, I'd ever want to reverse this repair, I can. Um, and so I've cut just a small section here. Uh, I generally will try to cut a piece a little bit larger than what I need uh, because that gives me the ability to come back then and trim off any of the excess to make sure that I'm getting that uh, adhesive all the way to the edge of the piece. Um, I use these little mini shears because they've got a nice straight edge and uh, it, it allows me to get right up next to the original cardboard when I make these um, uh, trim up these ends on here. It makes for a really nice clean and even repair. And this stuff is, you know, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, once you get the backing off, it's really just a matter of lining it up. Um, in this case, I'm actually gonna, gonna just do it by hand, just hold it with my fingers, because that lets me kind of feel where the edge of the box is on the back. And I can see where the artwork is gonna line up on the front here. And when I get that to a point about there where I'm happy with it, all I got to do is just press very lightly on the back to get that adhesive to stick. Um, now to really set it uh, and to activate all the glue, the glue activates under pressure. Um, I use this little bone burnishing tool to kind of rub it uh, on the back side. And the tissue itself goes almost translucent, almost transparent. Um, and it just kind of disappears uh, when you uh, burnish it down. And so it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. Um, I am going to go ahead and reinforce these uh, side flaps as well. Uh, when I looked at them on the inside, you can see the start of a tear forming. Um, so I'm just going to line up here on the outside of the box you know, about how wide of a piece I need. And I'll go ahead and trim these up and reinforce the inside of the side flaps as well. That completes the first end of, of this box. On the other end here, you can see the main flap is intact. It's uh, it's worn, and originally I had thought the inner flaps were missing. They're not. They're just shoved back inside the box um, with what looks like an old cello tape um, or scotch tape repair. And uh, I'm not sure how to get these out without damaging them further. Um, other than with my maybe my tweezers here um, but obviously these were at some point uh, previously somebody tried to repair them uh, using a little bit of scotch tape so we're gonna remove those and do it right so after some patience and fiddling with this I, I was able to get these uh, end flaps pulled back out um, and as I, I've said in previous videos uh, the sellotape is not a good long-term repair. Um, there's acids in the adhesives. It can actually damage the cardboard 
and it's going to yellow and look bad over time. And so anytime I come across these previous repairs, I like to remove uh, the cello tape in favor of you know something that's more archival quality. The easiest way that I have found to get these to come off is to use a little bit of lighter fluid. Um, and this is actually a tip that I came across uh, thanks to another YouTuber. Um, his channel is called Toy Poloi, and he specializes in restorations of all different kinds of um, toys, but generally uh, Star Wars action figures. Um, and he's you know comes across a lot of these original carded figures that uh, had tape or maybe labels or, or price tags uh, fixed to them in some way. And um, he used this method and it has worked absolutely flawless for me. Um, and as you can see, just a very light soak of the lighter fluid just dissolves the adhesives on that tape and it comes right off. Um, the other advantage to the lighter fluid is that eventually it evaporates. And so it doesn't leave any kind of residue there in the, the cardboard. Um, a few minutes after I do these repairs, any of that yellowing or discoloration that you see along the edge of the cardboard um, kind of vanishes it, it, as soon as that goes off and that, uh, that lighter fluid evaporates. It, it doesn't seem to have any lasting negative effect on the cardboard itself. Um, you do want to be careful with how much you use. I don't want to use any more than I have to. Um, but the, the tape really should peel back very easy. Uh, if you're getting any resistance or if it's starting to peel up the surface of any of that cardboard, um, just apply an, another little dab of the lighter fluid and wait a few minutes. Um, a little patience usually pays off for me. So, As you can see, we've been able to successfully remove both of these inner flaps, um, remove all the tape that was on those. Um, and I'm going to let these uh, go off and just let that evaporate and we'll come back in a few minutes and attempt to repair those. Um, as you can see, even though this end flap is intact, I've got the beginning of a tear here on the inside of the box, um, and that's also something that I will go ahead and fix. To repair this tear on the inside of the box here, um, or the start of a tear, I'm gonna use the exact same method that we used on the first flap, and that is just another short little piece of archival mending tissue We'll cut it to length and burnish it down. So now that it's been a few minutes, uh, you can see these uh, end flaps here. All the discoloration from the lighter fluid is gone. There's still a little bit of an adhesive residue on there, um, but nothing I think that I can get off any more than I already have. In order to put these flaps back on, uh, we're going to use still the same method. Um, I am making these repairs on the inside of the box. That way they don't show up at all from the outside. In some of my other restorations, the boxes have been a little bit further gone and I've had to make repairs on the outside of the box. But again, because of the, the age and the significance of this model, I want to try to make all these repairs um, as invisible as, as possible. And so uh, we start with, again, a slightly oversized piece of mending tissue. And I'll come back in with my mini shears and just trim those up to fit. Um, and then we'll put them in just by feel.
with all of our in-flap restoration complete, uh, there's really only one thing left to do, and that is to press and straighten this box. Um, if you look inside, you'll be able to see the, the flap that is glued um, from when these boxes are, are flat to when they assemble them. I always like to bend them flat in that same direction. Um, and I'm using just a standard household iron um, at the medium setting, just right below where there would be any steam. I don't want to introduce any moisture steam into the box. Um, there's always a little bit that comes out, but uh, I never know what stains or um, organics might already be in the cardboard. And a lot of times uh, hitting them with heat or steam can activate that and actually make stains more visible. Um, so a medium setting on your heat is usually enough. That also helps to kind of set permanently the, the adhesives in the mending tissue. It straightens all the edges and sides. Um, and then while it's still warm, I kind of want to shape the cardboard in where I want it so that as it starts to cool down, it really solidifies and takes on um, that shape and that form. So I'll close up the end flaps here. That will help keep it straight and square. And then uh, the only thing left is the touch-up work that we have to do on the model itself. As I stated earlier, this particular model really is in pretty good shape uh, for, for the age that it is. Um, the only thing that we're going to do is just some touch-ups. Uh, some of the black on their boots and their hats has worn off. And you can see the original base coat of white that was underneath. In order to make these touch-ups, um, I'm going to use my Tester's Paint, Tester's Gloss Black and uh, one of these little mini q-tips. Now, because this model is so small and the details are so fine, um, I actually got out my uh, magnification headset here. Um, it's just, uh, it's kind of a pair of glasses with these magnifying lenses and a little light on the end. Um, I've got a link down in the description for where I ordered these from Amazon. And uh, I'm not that old, I'm 35 this year. But uh, when it gets down to these really super fine details, having that extra set of eyes really does uh, help me do a better job and, and keep things lined up a little bit more. So if you see some, some of the lighting kind of um, shifting around uh, in the background here, it's because I'm wearing my magnifying headset uh, so that I can see what I'm doing when I make these tiny little paint touch-ups. So um, again, I use the Tester's Enamel. Uh, the reason I prefer the enamel is because that's what uh, Lesney used originally. And uh, if I'm trying to make a, a true-to-form uh, repair to this or sympathetic restoration, um, I want to stick with the same kind of paint. So I'm going to just very lightly touch up. And, and you can see some of these areas, uh, especially this rudder on the back, the boot's kind of messy, but that's the way it came from the factory. And... I could fix it, but I'd end up making it too perfect, and then it, it wouldn't look right. It wouldn't look original, and so uh, my goal with this is not perfection. Uh, my goal with this really is just to touch up some of the high edge wear, the high surface wear uh, paint loss on this and get it back to as close as I think it might have been to what it was when it left the the Lesney factory. Um, again, keep in mind that this is the very first model they ever made, and so there wasn't probably a lot of care given to um, who was painting these or how much time they had to paint them. And they made over a million of them, so uh, I'm guessing that you know these were moved down the line pretty quick. And with uh, with four different paint colors, the white base, the red, the gold, and the black. Um, there was probably more manual labor put into this model than most of the other later Matchbox uh, series were. And so um, I want to touch up some of these without making it look too perfect, too much like a repair. After the black, um, I'm going to touch up just a couple areas of the red. The red didn't seem to be as bad, um, but because it's red over white, all those areas that have worn off have that bright white showing through in the bottom. And so I want to make sure that uh, I get those repaired. 
Uh, to do that, I'm using a Tester's Cherry Red, which was about the closest I could find out of my little collection of paints. Um, and I, I think it's a, a spot on um, substitute for the red that they used on these little uh, soldiers. So make a few of those touch ups and then we'll be ready to finish this one up. So that about does it for this sympathetic re restoration and box repair of the 1953 Moko Lesney Coronation Coach. Um, I think as the uh, paint touch-ups have dried and cured now, this really does look, I think, as close as what it might have looked like when it came out of the factory. Um, and this original box now has all the bits and pieces uh, intact and reattached where they belong. Um, and so uh, I've been able to take this uh, $40 investment in this uh, nice original model and hopefully improve the value a little bit. As I said, you know, the ones that I've seen uh, sold prices for recently vary anywhere between $150 and $200. And um, this uh, certainly will take uh, a centerpiece in my collection um, as one of the more important and influential models that I have. So as always, if you enjoyed this restoration, I hope you did, give me a like down below. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, what, what you think I did right, what you think I did wrong, things I can do better, or things you want to see me try in the channel in the future. Um, and as always, click that subscribe button. That helps you keep up to date with this and all of our future videos as well. Um, I do have a very exciting announcement coming uh, later this week. I'm not sure when exactly I'll get the video done. Um, I've, I've been traveling a bunch lately, so this is the first week I've been home and could kind of get back on top of some of these things. But um, got a pretty exciting announcement coming, so watch for that video when it drops later this week. Um, and be sure to check in next week for another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration.